Hello, my name's Caroline, widow of Alan Lumsden. My daughter Emma, also a musician, has written a lovely tribute to her father, which I would like to read for you. Alan passed away peacefully in Frampton on Severn, where we live in Gloucestershire, on the 30th of September 2020, aged 86 years. An exceptionally versatile musician on a large number of early brass and woodwind instruments, Alan was a founding member of the London Trombone Quartet, the London Cornet and Sackbutt Ensemble and the London Serpent Trio. At 14, a teacher noticed his thirst for learning and offered to give him his old trombone if he was able to play all the pieces from a first tutor book by the end of the year. Alan completed the book in a matter of weeks and the trombone was his. With the money he made from a paper round, he was able to buy some old instruments which he saw in a local junk shop. Among them was an 18th century flute in good playing condition which he taught himself to play immediately. Before reading history at Downing College, Cambridge, his aptitude for languages led him to train as a Russian interpreter during his two years of national service and he was later employed by the BBC Russian service to give talks on music. He played both the trumpet and the role of Queen Gertrude in the first ever UK performance in Russian of Hamlet, broadcast on the home service. Whilst at Cambridge, he earned money by playing in the university dance band and translating Russian music catalogues for Music Arara, a London music shop which specialised in importing music. It was during this time that Alan started arranging and editing publishing over 30 editions of early wind and brass music for Music Arara. On leaving Cambridge, he made three trips to Russia selling clothes on the black market in order to buy music and bring back rare editions of Glinka and other lesser known Russian composers to the West. On the last trip, he was thwarted by the Russian authorities and was given a suspended sentence of three years hard labour in Siberia. Having met various performing musicians during his time on the shop floor in London, Alan was soon offered work on the trombone with the London Philharmonic Orchestra and went on to play with many of the major English orchestras, including the London Symphony Orchestra, the Royal Philharmonic Orchestra, the Halle, the BBC Scottish and many more. It was at this time that he founded the London Trombone Quartet with Tony Moore, first trombone of the London Philharmonic Orchestra. John Edney and John Pritchard on bass trombone. He also had his first trombone lessons with Dennis Wick, principal trombone of the London Symphony Orchestra and a re renowned teacher. Dennis commented that Alan is very nearly a very good player, which for those that know Dennis knew that this was fine praise. He also gave the first London performances of the Block Trombone Concerto and the Mio Concertina for Trombone and Strings and the first performance this side of the Iron Curtain of the Sirocchi Trombone Concerto. Alan always had a need to diversify because he was such an enthusiast, enthusiast about instruments and had a passion for discovering and playing music with others. He was a great friend of David Munro sharing his enthusiasm for early music and started to play more in the early music field. David became aware that there was an opportunity to diversify into authentic early music performance by procuring historic instruments. German brass manufacturers were making copies of original Nuremberg sackbuts preserved in museums, but they were exuberantly expensive, leading most of the freelance trombone players to commit an act of vandalism by sawing the bell off a modern trombone to reduce its size from 7 inches to 4 inches. These adapted instruments became known as sawn-off shotguns. However, Allen acquired at great expense a Meinle and Lauber copy of an instrument by Hans Nerschel. It was on this instrument that Allen performed Albrechtsberger's Concerto for Sackbutt at the City of London Festival. He also recorded music for BBC television productions of Romeo and Juliet, Measure for Measure, King Henry VIII and played trombone, ophiclide, serpent and percussion for the Doctor Who episode Revenge of the Cyberman. Alan was regularly performing with the London Early Music Group, presenting scholarly yet at the same time musically aware performances of Renaissance music, including Wigmore Hall's Summer Festival. 
Throughout the 70s, Alan was away on foreign tours for an average of three weeks in every four. He toured extensively in Europe, Australia and America, mostly with the London Early Music Group, but also with the London Serpent Trio. This unique ensemble was founded by the early musical and instrument maker Christopher Monk, along with Alan and Andrew van der Beek, to spread the awareness of the instrument throughout the UK, Europe and USA. Their first performance took place on the 1st of April 1976 at St John Smith Square in London. The name had a humorous touch as there were already well-known groups such as the London String Teacher, London String Trio and the London Wind Trio. London made it sound important. The trio played mainly in 18th century wind trios, three-part Renaissance polyphonic music, recorder trios and the Scottish composer Judith Weir wrote an arrangement of Cherry Ripe for the group. They made three tours of USA in the 70s, visiting Yale University all three times. Alan had very fond memories of playing at the Detroit Institute of Arts in a Sunday morning programme they called Brunch with Bark, where the audience was issued with plastic plates and cutlery so as not to disturb the music while eating. He was delighted to premiere Simon Proctor's Serpent Concerto in 1989 at the first International Serpent Festival organised by Craig Cradell at the University of South Carolina and other highlights included the Serpent Celebration Concert held in London in 1990 to mark the 400th anniversary of the Serpent with 58 guest serpents from around the world, the largest assembly of serpent players for at least 200 years, as well as playing at the world premiere of Peter Maxwell Davis's opera Taverner at Covent Garden. Andrew van der Beek remembers one of the more unusual London Serpent Trio bookings. Christopher Monk, Alan and I were confined to a small booth to one side of the orchestra with our own microphone armed with conches, didgeridoos, alphorns, serpents and other odds and ends to provide special effects for the voice of the alien himself, much to the entertainment of the rest of the orchestra. One of his rarest instruments was not an original but a reproduction, using knowledge of how a slide trumpet looked from paintings and prints of the period, where it is most often shown in the hands of angels, Alan and an instrument maker friend were able to reconstruct the trumpet using the length of the angel, head for scale. His recitals would also include the earliest piece for trombone, Suzanne Ungya by Rognoni, 1620. On one lecture tour around the UK, he was accompanied in Gloucestershire by music organiser Tony Hewitt-Jones. It was while staying with Tony and his wife Anita, he met their daughter Caroline, a violin student at the Guildhall School of Music. They married in 1973, Alan even doing an Ophiclyde solo at the Ald Alborough Festival on their wedding night. And, I might add, forgetting to get me a ticket. <laughs> Like so many performing musicians, Alan loved teaching. He taught brass and ran brass and wind bands at Ashmole School, Southgate. On the untime, untimely demise of David Munro and finding himself with a young family to support, he was invited to take on the full-time running of the Ashmole Music Department, which he did with gusto by involving as many pupils as possible in a performance of Britain's Noah's Flood. He also held the position of Professor of the Sackbut at the Royal College of Music, as well as Professor of the Recorder and Early Music Studies at the Birmingham Conservatoire. Throughout the 80s, Alan juggled a full-time position as Head of Brass at Malvern College, adjudicating around the world, conducting orchestras and organising residential summer music courses at Beecham House. In 1987, Alan wrote The Sound of the Sackbut, a history of the trombone in 10 pages, originally given as a lecture at Edinburgh University to celebrate the acquisition of the 1594 Anton Schnitzer tenor trombone into the university's collection of historical musical instruments. Alan continued his early music research, creating editions of early works under the imprint Beecham Press and inviting colleagues to tutor on the Beecham early music courses, which are still flourishing today. Alan ran the early music courses for over 25 years, first with Michael Proctor and then the last 15 years with Philip Tholby. The course concerts were given in the historic Norman Church of St Mary the Crypt in Gloucester, where a tapestry hangs its first declaring, Brass before and brass behind, never feared a foe of any kind. When Alan was diagnosed with Alzheimer's in 2012, he and Caroline returned home to Gloucestershire. 
to be with their four children and nine adoring grandchildren. And we've had a wonderful life. Obviously it was hard for the last few years with the Alzheimer's, but Alan coped with it incredibly, incredibly well. And we're just so grateful that he's left such a legacy behind.